Hi, this is Leslie Farouk of Team Farouk with a trip down memory lane to look at some of the influential factors on the development of my pedagogy at the American School Foundation of Monterey in northern Mexico. Year three was an interesting year because I was balancing being a new mother with working full time and while uh, some of the experiences were very difficult. I did find that being able to watch a new person interact with their world and sometimes seeing some of the same behaviors in the students that I taught, even though they were seniors, softened my approach somewhat because now I could understand them from a different point of view, the point of view of a child, which it hadn't really occurred to me before that, that they still were, even though they're old, there were a lot of similarities between their exploration of the occurrences in the classroom and what I would see my young son doing at home. So by the time I started year three, my son was almost crawling and life was very interesting at home. It was challenging to be a mom of a baby and also work full time, but somehow I survived it. In looking back on the photos from this particular school year, I noticed that there are a lot of photos of my son and not so many of the activities at the school. One thing I did notice was that I had a plan in place for making sure I had accountability for lab station work. I organized it so that if a given lab station was in disarray at the end of the lab, Everybody knew whose job it was supposed to be to fix that, and so I uh, thought that that was very interesting that I set that up on the whiteboard. I can also see down in the corner, these are my first attempt at inquiry-based approaches. I had hung graphs of data of various environmental factors and the response of organisms either via population counts or some kind of metabolic pathway reaction to have the students come to a consensus or a conclusion as to what we essentially call the Goldilocks principle that anything um, that's in insufficient quantity, anything that's in excess, those are the kinds of things that uh, do not serve organisms as well as having their optimum level of something like pH or temperature or humidity. And so the students were up out of their chairs looking at these graphs and coming to their own conclusions about the um, laws that dictate how and where species will grow more favorably, which is essentially how we get the ecosystems that we have in the major biomes of the planet. The biggest and most significant change from year two to year three in my mind was the fact that H1N1 broke out right around the time my son was born and we ended up out of school for 11 days and we had no way to continue to administer content to students during that time and so we adopted a learning management system that a few teachers, uh, myself included, had been working with a little bit just in a few classes, EDU 2.0. And so I'm able to log in and see that one of the very first things that I would do with students is I would have them take a diagnostic quiz to find out what they still remembered from Science 9 the last time they had taken uh, ecology as a subject in order to establish whether or not I had to do some reteaching from the Science 9 curriculum or if I could jump into new content of the Grade 12 curriculum. It's very interesting that the, um, the first sort of steps involved in getting what I used to do in the classroom onto a learning management system was just the organization therein of the topics. You can see some of these are not numbered at all. They do have dates or days of the year. Um, I started a numbering system 
but got frustrated that I couldn't differentiate which was in which unit and so this is unit three for example but this is unit four and I know that but the students didn't and so my most recent iterations therein are a numbering system that kind of resembles a textbook section per chapter numbering system so one is unit and then this is lesson one and unit one and so that meant that at any point if any student was not in class, for some reason, they could access the PowerPoint file. I would turn it into a PDF with several slides per page, black and white, to reduce the paper usage if they printed it. Any additional information that could help them, regardless of whether they had been in class or if they had new questions that they didn't know how to address on their own. They could check here and potentially find some information that was useful, including these interesting gateways that would only let them pass to the next lesson if they got a certain grade that I decided on um, in terms of the achievements. And this is just a archived class representing those first attempts at setting my whole practice up online and it was very liberating to be able to say you know you were absent can you check edu and see if you can find what you need to do there and then that really allowed them to go and get that information as soon as they needed it um, and it also enabled me to help students once they'd taken a look at the content instead of having to print things out for them. They were able to be self-starters. And so that was one of the most um, worked upon parts of my practice in year three was trying to set this up on EDU 2.0 so I could for certain say that anything that any student would need would be there even if I wasn't available, and it was very liberating. Thank you for listening. I'll be back at you with year four.